welcome back. And we're getting ready to move into a very interesting conversation with Canon Leroy Flowers today. Good morning, and thank Good you morning. for being here. Good morning to both of you, <laughs> and morning to those in TV land who are watching today. Yeah. I trust that as we embark on this Lenten journey, we will have time to reflect and to, as I love to say, to cool down mm -hmm. and to look at ourselves what it is that we want to do and that we are doing with ourselves. Absolutely. So and I appreciate you pointing out from the very onset how sober the season uh, is, is uh, considered to be. Um, yesterday was Ash Wednesday. Yes, and so. Was Ash Wednesday. Many people, full day yesterday, even if they couldn't remember that it was Ash Wednesday, would have seen someone, someone with ashes on their forehead and know that it is the official start of the Lenten, Lenten season. season. I had six services yesterday, wow. so you can imagine, yeah. but it was rewarding yeah. and hopeful. Yeah. Definitely. But, um, <clears throat> you know, when it comes to the Lenten season, because you know, I grew up in a household whereby we, you know, it was very important to us. It reminded us a lot of uh, what it was like back in the day, and we took heed of it because to us, it became a part of us. Mm -hmm. But we're in the modern era whereby a lot of folks would do their own reading and, 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 and follow what they see and what they hear. What is it like now? How significant it is in today's era? Let me say, I'm one of those... Christians who are very conscious of the world around you. Mm -hmm. And we live in a very pluralistic society. Mm -hmm. The last census reminded us that at least 20% of the population don't believe in God at all. Mm -hmm. wow. Or thereabout, I'm not certain of the exact figures. And also, this nonsense that I keep hearing people talk about, this is a Christian nation, is rubbish. This is a God-fearing nation mm -hmm. under our constitution. And therefore, we need to recognize that as times, as you call it, the modern times, mm -hmm. um, has evolved. Yeah. So less people believing in God. Yeah. And those who believe have a more challenging times. Because in my time, as a child, and in your time, and in Marcel, Marcella's time, there, we did not have all parents out of the house. Mm -hmm. Today, that's a given. That's a, yes. And therefore, I mean, that is the only way they can put bread on the table. So we have to understand the dynamics in which we operate. Now, yeah. what is Lent? Lent, the word Lent is not found in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lent means the lengthening of the days, and as you will see, the days become longer, the sun will come up earlier, right. and mm -hmm. so we'll have... It is during the time when Christians, way back in the first century, mm -hmm. decided that we need to focus our attention on the life of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so the church has a season, or seasons as we say. Mm -hmm. We begin with Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, Easter, Easter. Um, 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 Pentecost. Mm -hmm. all, it's all about the life of Jesus, how we show and we celebrate the life. That's what the church does. Now, as a part of that, Lent has been all the time when we recall in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, where Jesus wanted to determine what was God's will in his life. And so we are told that he went into the desert and fasted for 40 days and 40 wow. nights. He never actually heard God saying to him, boy, this is what I wanted to do. What he did here was following his baptism, he was affirmed by God, this is my beloved son mm -hmm. in whom I'm well pleased. And so Lent is the period where the church stop, mm -hmm. reflects mm -hmm. on the life of the Christian church, mm -hmm. bearing in mind that it was also used as a time to prepare the new converts. It was a time when new converts were instructed in the faith. Now, because remember, it was not until somewhere around 390 something that Constantine mm -hmm. was converted. And so in that part of the world, mm -hmm. it became legal, if you want to use that terminology. 
in order for Christians to publicly display their Christian faith. Yeah. So Lent is a time whereby we say, and I am persuaded that today more than ever, that season is needed. Let me tell you why. Yesterday on the news, there was the, the coverage of the, um, the, 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 the psychiatrist mm -hmm. who was conducting workshops for police officers, social workers, etc. And trauma. And, and people in trauma. Well, everybody is in trauma mm -hmm. in our lives, you know. So we need to stop. Yeah. And Lent is a wonderful time in order to stop. It's about me if I'm yeah. gonna if I'm gonna survive if I'm gonna be a better person. That's what really Lent is all about. Now let's look at at, at how uh, the celebration of Lent has evolved. Um, and one of the things that we look at is the preparation for Lent, uh, where people have exhibited or practiced a kind of a, a festive. A festive season, season of excess, yes. preparing for, for what Lent. we know to Lent, yes. uh, for yes. Lent is meant to be a time of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. where, where does this first this, start? This, where this does is this come from? Shrove Tuesday, mm -hmm. where you feed your face mm -hmm. as to, because after this now you're going to go on a, as we say, on a fast. Yeah. And you're going to abstain from a number of, um, and, and so for instance, if you're in New Orleans, um, on Tuesday, I mean the Mardi Gras. And Mardi Gras. That's, and also, if you're in um, Trinidad, mm -hmm. I mean it's a wonderful experience. Quite honestly, um, in order so you get the excess to prepare for forty days. Yeah, and you said even the Fat Tuesday comes from the fact that you would be cutting out. That's right. Milk so, and so, so, so what you do? Products. That's right. As what I've done because. I think it's so important. A lot of people criticize, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people practice, but many times they don't know what it is that they're doing. Mm -hmm. What I've done in our um, circles is to share with members mm -hmm. the little brochure, mm -hmm. which this is, which explains in very simple terminology mm -hmm. what exactly this thing is all about, mm -hmm. how it has evolved, why. It, because, for instance, during Lent, mm -hmm. Sunday is not a day of fast. Sunday for the Christian is the day of celebration. We recall a small Easter every Sunday. Yeah. That is critical to the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. you know? So in order to get 40 days, we have to begin middle of the week. Mm -hmm. okay? Now, who was there when Jesus fasted? We don't know. And so we don't want to... Are you sure about this day and that? That's not what we are talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are talking about a period of time whereby we need to reflect what Jesus did. And this, this and is, so that is so important. Yeah. This is part of where I think a lot of people find themselves today. Where non-Christians or non-believers mm -hmm. uh, are very critical about the exact roots that's right and, the day and, um, and the time ties and then... into what the Bible says and uh, how we have developed these practices so I, I don't think there is a need to uh, argue or to prove the point but I do want to talk about how a lot of the traditions are tied into what took place before Jesus' death see as I said Lent evolved over the centuries where the church took time to instruct those who wanted to be Christians. Yeah. But also, as the world evolved, mm -hmm. we don't have this band of converts so large anymore. Mm -hmm. Plus, individually, collectively, you know, in parishes, churches, denominations. But it's also an important, and I don't want to miss the, 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 this point, that each one of us need time out. Each one of us need time out in our lives. I spoke about it this morning. That is so critical. Why are people so angry? Hmm. Why are people killing themselves? Why are people so violent? They need time out. Time to reflect. And Lent for the church is a golden opportunity to be able to do just that. And that's what Jesus did. And that's he what went Jesus into did. The he went into the desert by himself. 
And we are told in St. Matthew's Gospel, mm -hmm. the fourth chapter, that this is what happened. And after, now this is interesting, mm -hmm. after the 40 days, Satan came to him. Aren't you God's son, boy? Come on, man, prove yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, aren't you the God's son? Throw yourself down. You know, look at the world. I'm going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. We are reminded that temptation, which is real to everybody, comes from the world, the flesh, mm -hmm. and the devil. Now, mm -hmm. unfortunately, Paul Satan get blamed for most of the things <laughs> because we said that Satan. Well, that's not true according to the Bible. Um, some translation reminds us that for a period of time, Satan left Jesus. Mm -hmm. If Satan is always on your back, John, something is radically wrong. <laughs> you know? That's because he's comfortable there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so we need, we are tempted you know, in, in, in the challenges of our lives by the world, yeah. materialism, etc., um, arrogance, and, and all the other vices, and then we are tempted by ourselves. Mm -hmm. You see, one of the wonderful things about this God is that he has given you a will, you know, John. Mm -hmm. So I know, for instance, you talk to my immediate family, my wife and children. I blame them for everything. But of course, that's a kapot. <laughs> <no? laughs> see, he finally admitted to your fault. Just so you heard it for yourself. But in, in, in truth and in fact, you and I have to make decisions. Okay? You know, and then there is a temptation yeah. from, this, from the devil. Yeah. There are three. Canon categories. Flowers, I think it's so interesting when we speak about, uh, you, you, you mentioned it earlier, taking a break from what is happening. Um, one of the things we know about uh, the 40 days of retreat Period. that, that uh, Jesus took uh, when, his, when he knew his death was imminent, um, it shows the human side of him where while it is the will of God yes. uh, it wasn't that he was uh, as much as he was God's son he was human he was and also human. wanting to come to terms with yes, what was yes, going to we, happen his as own well. life. that's right and it's something that even in our today society is is very important that we don't like things um, that sometimes we have to accept or we have to figure yes, out how to change. Yes, yes. Let me just, just so that nobody calls you or email you on. Uh, the, the temptation of Jesus did not take place at the end of his life. It took place at the beginning mm -hmm. of his ministry. Mm -hmm. So it was in trying and then we are told he began his ministry. After having been affirmed, you see, this is the point. Mm -hmm. He was sure of what he was about to do. Mm -hmm. He was confident. So that when he came to the very end mm -hmm. now, the humanness which came out, God, I don't want to do this. I really don't want, is there no other way? But if this is the only way, then I'm prepared. Mm -hmm. you will. I think that is so fundamental um, for us to understand that you and I have free will and we blame everybody. And yes, there's enough blame to go around. But we have got to take responsibility as a child. One of the unique things that I love about my faith is this. Mm -hmm. Each one of us is created in the image and likeness of God. That means that you and I possess qualities and attributes of God himself. Right. You know. I, I want to get back to tradition and, and then again clear the air uh, okay. of some stuff. Okay. Because as a child growing up in a Christian home, we were always thought that during Lent, there are a few things you're not supposed to do. Yeah. Uh, places you're not supposed to no, go. We're trying to, trying to deny yourself. It's a self-denial uh, This is why I'm concept. saying, this is why I'm saying the clear the air. Where does come from? What well, is you the see, root of the remember, sacrifice during Lent? Remember, it's, Jesus had to make a great sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I mean, giving up food for 40 days. I don't know if I want to go without food. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and yet, he had to bring himself under subjection. And, and that's, that's a challenge of itself. I mean, I'm certain ladies more than men, but a lot of men too, mm -hmm. um, they talk about um, um, fasting and discipline and abstention and trying to lose weight and not eating this and eating that. And the first three days is fine. And then the fourth day, 
boy. Yeah. It's a whole different <laughs> craving start That's, happening. It's a whole, and, and, and the very same thing with Jesus. I am sure it was not easy for him. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us the angels came and ministered to him. Mm -hmm. You know, that he was so famished, you know, and, and, and Satan knows just when we are most vulnerable, you know, and, and, and I think that's always, and that's why I keep saying that, saying in First Peter it tells we must, we must learn to flee the devil. So now you've got to run, you know, John. You've got to run away from that temptation. And I know that in the society in which we live, that is a sign of weakness. <laughs> but for the Christian, it's a sign of strength. Sometimes it's best to run away from that scenario yeah. because you get yourself in deeper water than you should ever have found yourself in. But in, in terms of giving up, it is a matter of discipline. I remember yeah. as a boy, um, there were no martini during Lent. I mean, I mean, you saw your save up all your brook band, and oh, <laughs> hopefully that by the time so you, you know, you're gonna be that sacrifice. They made that sacrifice. That was me, you, you know. Wow. And and, and the family did. Um, they didn't have any sweets during yeah. Lent. I mean, they didn't pro and provide dessert and so on during mm -hmm. Lent. But those, fish on Friday. You know, and... that's right. Um, you had to go to um, extra services as a part of that discipline, and. And it was helpful. But in today's world, I am not so worried about that because we're living in the real world. Mm -hmm. And people have so many challenges. For instance, this is an example. As a priest, I have realized that a number of people, especially they live in the suburbs of the city, have difficulty to get to mass mm -hmm. on any given day during the week in the morning and get to work on time. Mm -hmm. So what I have done, and I know um, it goes on at the cathedral as well, because it started when I was there. We began a midday service. Okay. 45 minutes. So you know that you can get away from work, do mass, and still get back to your work without having, getting, um, getting yourself into any difficulty. Yeah. Because yeah. at the end of the day, who won't pay the bill? Yeah. So we have to be realistic. So what I'm saying is that you've, we've got to find ways. That's how I maintain yeah. it. We've got mm -hmm. to adjust to find ways to help uh, members because there is a need. The need. I mean, yesterday at midday mass in my chapel, we had what forty nine persons, all business people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all business people. And I mean, they were. I, I had to smile because um, somebody. Um, did that look at his watch and I said, you're going home in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so they but, kept you on schedule. You know, but, yep. the, but the point is that we have also have to help people to yeah. adjust because mm -hmm. the whole purpose is, is for you and for me. It's what yeah. Jesus did already. I, I love that concept of the church evolving along with, not necessarily in the least, but working along you with have the to. people you mm -hmm. have who want to be able to uh, access. They're not going to come to church. Yeah. I mean, and the evening it's uh, when 4.30 or 5 o'clock is getting home, I'm going to beat that traffic yes. yeah. to get back home. You know, or pick up me up. As what happened last night, somebody came and said, you know, I figured it was six, but I said, no, I have time. I'm going to pick up my boys from school, mm -hmm. and they were caught in traffic. Mm -hmm. When they got to church, church was halfway. Wow. And I said, well, it's better be halfway than no, no, way, at no way at all. But you know, it's that kind of reality that we, yeah. have, you can, well, have, you know, one kind of church, you stop coming. To, no, 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 no. A question We've was got posed, to be able to. A question was posed to me the other day, and I want to throw it out to you. Why do we uh, start or celebrate Lent, as uh, starting it with ashes to the head? It is because it, it is what it is. It is a mark of penitence coming out of the Jewish faith in preparation for Passover. And so when you read the, the Bible, whenever the Old Testament in particular, you find that when people were sorry and were, they would cover themselves with ashes, sackcloth and ashes it is referred to. So that's a penitential. And so all we are saying publicly is that we are about to begin this most penitent season. The church's liturgy changes. Um, they, even though you are, you, 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 you celebrate, you celebrate in a more somber, somber way, yeah. way. Because remember, even it's about my sins. Even the sequences in the mass That's right. It's, yeah. it's about my sins, mm -hmm. not about yours. What am I doing? What, how do I, how do I, overcome the deception that has become the norm in my life? 
how do I become that ang how do I deal with that anger? Mm -hmm. How do I deal with and uh, one of the fascinating I have a book that I was reading um, just recently by one of my favorite West Indian theologian, a man called Cartwright Davis, in which he says one of the 20, 21st century sin is the technology that is being abused. Facebook, etc. Mm -hmm. And you know, only just two weeks ago, you would know this better than I. I don't have any Facebook, mm -hmm. so, Paige. But cheaters, mm -hmm. you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yes. Now, how you can you, you demean yourself? Face, you how don't can, have Facebook, but you're up to date. How can you demean date. yourself in such a way? <laughs> that, that is the challenge, you know. Yeah. Why would you, are you, do you have no value? Yeah. That you're going to do that to yourself? Mm -hmm. So when I see you and we recognize some of the pe persons, mm -hmm. yeah, Man, I don't want to come near you at all. <laughs> <laughs> I think that those are the realities that we've got to, we've got to. And you know, one of the challenges we have in our society is that a lot of Christians are becoming holier than thou. And that saddens me because it drives away yeah. um, people from, from really coming nearer to you mm -hmm. and eventually to your God. And therefore, we need to be able to to reach out to people in love, with yeah. respect. And see, I love to say, each of you here, I am blessed to be in your presence because you're gems. Mm -hmm. Now, you may not want to polish yours. That's all right, Marlene does. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, 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 and so, but in our interaction, mm -hmm. I should help you to want to discover, to polish it, yes. so that it will shine, no. not to demean it. And, it's and Lent is a time when it says, you need to take time to polish that gem. Yeah. Mm. That's it's, really what it is, you know. And it's, it's I mean, what you, usually you repent uh, That's before exactly. the, the Lenten season. The whole, the but I love what you're speaking about just the, the foundation of the church is that it's for sinners. That's, that's, that's exactly. Who, I mean, it's a hospital of sinners. Mm -hmm. you know. And when we see in this uh, modern era where there are non believers, um, and then there are Bible thumping, uh, you do not qualify to be Christian that's right, type that's of uh, that's persons right, that's right. who really change what the, the, the general the understanding of is of Jesus having is. faith. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I wanted to touch on that because I think it builds a bit of skepticism about why people do what they do, why there is a sacrifice during Lent, why it is a somber season, why... Uh, we change certain things and habits about ourselves. What do you say when people come to you with concerns of what we see in the general landscape right here in Belize and in the rest of the world, where you have the fundamentalists who uh, are about exclusion and uh, those who are scared to get involved because of what they've seen and heard from the fundamentalists? I think that, first and foremost, we need to affirm people. Those are what I affirm them. Mm -hmm. We need to let them understand that we are not the message. Too many Christians in the world, Western world, are wanting to become the message rather than the messenger. And the Bible is very clear in my understanding. All you need to do to be saved is to believe in your heart and confess with your lips. Now. That's the first step. Mm -hmm. The second step is the life that you live. I was saying that, and I use, and I will continue to use it, there are two examples I want to share with you that is happening in Belize right now. The immigration scandal and the investigation by the Senate committee. And the arbitration ruling from the courts. In Belize, the general populace is divided upon political lines as who is right mm -hmm. and who is wrong. The Christian should never do that. And I have, without apologies, preached in my church mm -hmm. and said on radio and television that right and wrong has no party color. Mm -hmm. Right and wrong for the Christian is based upon the word and Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now. Am I here to be judge and jury of the people who are involved? No. All I'm saying is that if these people go to church faithfully and faithful to God, 
Did they know where their conscience lie and what is right and what is wrong? Because I know as far as, and maybe unless my lawyer corrects me and she hasn't corrected me yet, <laughs> nothing is going to come of that, you know. Nothing is going to come of, this is what, the third time we're having an investigation into scandal at eight million dollars gone one time, 200 passports gone. I mean, what is new? These are the very same people, the majority of them, every Sunday they go to a church. Of all faiths. Mm -hmm. And nobody can see that what I am doing is wrong. Because that's what it is, you know. The arbitration, we hear what our courts say. It has nothing to do with what the courts say. Depending on where you stand, you must pay the money or not pay the money. Mm -hmm. All I'm, I say to my people, be honest, be objective, listen to the courts of the land. Because the right and wrong for order in society has to be by the rule of law. That's where poor Donald Trump is now facing, the, before <laughs> he even sit properly in the seat, that the rule of law is, the, is what the, um, guides the day. Not what you feel, how you think. And so all I'm saying, those two examples to me, mm -hmm. is testimony of where Christians are in this community, so, including members of my own church. So how do we <laughs> use this Lenten season? What is your recommend? Because we're quickly running out of time. Mm -hmm. What is your recommendation in terms of using the Lenten season as a time for this nation, not just Christians? Okay, I think that our leaders, and I'm talking now, Religious leaders, in particular, number one. Religious leaders must get off the political bandwagon. It's a wonderful time to do that. Mm -hmm. But they can only do that if they're not trying to be self-preservative. They must do it for the well-being of this nation. Because ultimately, that's what will count. Two, our political leaders mm -hmm. on all sides of the bandwagon need to listen more and talk less. They need to listen. Here is most of these political leaders will tell you about, I mean, I smile. I, unfortunately, I could not go to the funeral for Bishop Martin because yeah. I had a funeral. Okay. So, I mean, yeah. he's a wonderful um, 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 example of Christian leadership in Belize. I mean, there's no two ways about that. But I smile as I watch the television and watch all these people who, they are leaders and they are there and, and, and contrary to everything else that we're supposed to be doing, I'm saying to them, listen to your people more. You can't take it with you. You cannot, you will not. That's for sure. And yet, the, you know, Divies, the story of Darius and Lazarus should be a good example mm -hmm. for all our leaders. Darius was not a bad man, you know. He was not a bad man. He didn't, he didn't get his wealth by illegal gains, according to scripture. But he did not have time for that man who sat at his gate every day. We have to be careful. Leadership is a responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's about service to God's people. So for our leaders, I maintain that that's what they need to do more. Mm -hmm. They need to listen and stop demeaning our people. I mean, the horror stories that we get from constituents when they go to some minister's mm -hmm. offices, it's, it, it blows up my brain. How could you do that? Now, when you see father or the other leaders, oh, you're so gentle and kind and <laughs> but boy, you just tell Miss Jane if your daughter can't come see her tonight, you know, and get, you know, sign the paper and all that. That happens right in this community and we don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so that's second. For the individual now, I maintain that we need to take time, first of all, mm -hmm. in our own lives. If you have never done this before, get your family together, even for 10 minutes every day. Or once a week, you don't want to get over um, ambitious. Once a week, 10 minutes, six weeks a length. Mm -hmm. Let's just, let's just affirm each other. When last did you praise a family? Just 10 minutes, you know. Mm -hmm. I love to say you need to focus. And one of the things that Christians use to focus 
is that we light a candle. No, no magic, no obia. Mm. So it's just the focus. It is the focus. So get your family together. Right. When, bef before you go to work or after, depending on where you are, give yourself time. You're always, these housewives who have to work, take care of the children, take care of the dog, take care of the husband, take care of the cat, take care of the rabbit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need to take time for yourself this Lent season. Absolutely. That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. And you know the thing about it, I love to say, you don't even have to put, open your Bible. You have this thing right here, Marlene, mm -hmm. you know, and you vibe or whatever. I don't know what it is. My little <laughs> grandson says, rams your head hard, you know. <laughs> have it right there. The point I make, you can take deliberate steps. And what about just letting go? You know, a lot of people are so angry. You drive down the street, good morning, not tell me no good morning, where you And then they justify the Bible and say, but well, God may get angry and Jesus may get angry, you know? <laughs> and you're cutting off yourself. That is what I think. And that's what I challenge our people to do yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's you. What you are doing. Fantastic. I Even think. if it's just five minutes before you come to work, John. Because you're going to meet Marlene and Marlene may not be in the best of mood, even though she will smile and say good morning, but she's hurting. She's hurting. A lot of people in this community are hurting big time. So give time to Important reflect. Important message. The Lenten season especially. Give time. And I think at a time when people are thinking of what they can give up, we can add on. Mm -hmm. That's right. A you, know, of you, may not, you, yeah. know, you may not have to I give up it. anything, yeah. but just take care of you, man. Yeah. Fantastic. You know, just thank take you. care of you. Thank you so much for being here today, Canon Excellent. Flowers. I think you've really given us some fantastic food for thought and we hope that people will uh, not just listen to the message but put it into practice as well. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. You know, it's always a pleasure. <laughs> and it's always good to see you wonderful people. Uh, and my good friend John, I can now say it, you know. Yes, sir. He's gone to higher heights so you don't want to leave anything for us. So thanks and I wish all a very peaceful yeah. and meaningful Lenten season. All right. We're going to go ahead now and take a break. And when we come back, we'll be talking to representatives of Mad Lab Media Belize about a mobile application and a new gift card system. So that's coming up after the break. <laughs> 